Hi there, welcome to Switch Mania. I am Clarence and today, we'll talk about the best Nintendo Switch games on sale. We will be covering the UK, EU, US, Australia, and Canada eShop. But first and foremost, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you want to see more of this series, please leave a like, remember to subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to receive future notifications. Likes and subscriptions help keep the channel alive. Just a quick reminder, 90% of you guys are not yet subscribed to the channel. If you are enjoying the videos and not subscribed yet, why not? You're coming back anyways. With all that said, let's get back to the video. First on our list is Endling Extinction is Forever. Endling Extinction is Forever is a fun and powerful game. It demonstrates how humans are greedy, corrupt, and have a unique method of destroying the environment. It also has small signs of hope and redemption that shine through the growing darkness. The game's main character, a traumatized fox, goes through a lot of difficult times that will break your heart while also making you angry and sad. This type of sad anger is intended to be a powerful motivator, so use it. Endling, Extinction is Forever is a Metroidvania-style adventure game. It has excellent audiovisual qualities as well as an important message about how we treat animals and our planet's future. In short, Herobeat Studios' first game was excellent and left a favorable impression on us. Next is Underhero. Underhero is a fantastic game that few people are aware of. It has a fantastic soundtrack, a fantastic cast of characters, and a fantastic way to fight. However, there are some issues with the game's pace that slow it down a Little. Its wit is always sharp, and its stories are frequently moving and well written. If you like the early Paper Mario games, you must play this one. Underhero is a lovely and inspiring game that cleverly combines platforming, turn based, and timing based combat and adventure elements. Even though there is a little too much backtracking and the slingshot weapon is difficult to aim, you can't help but smile while playing Underhero. It's yet another fantastic, must play indie title that every Switch owner should look into. Who hasn't wanted to peek behind the curtain to see how an evil overlord and his legions spend their days. Next up, Signs of the Sojourner. I've played a lot of deck building card games, but Signs of the Sojourner is unlike anything else I've experienced. The creator's ability to turn the concept of a two-person conversation into a fun card game with a heartfelt, open-ended story is nothing short of amazing. Because of this, as well as the excellent graphics and music, Signs of the Sojourner is a must-play in my opinion. Signs of the Sojourner is a refreshing game that works well because it takes ideas that everyone can relate to, such as talking to others, and turns them into a card game that makes sense and has a surprising amount of depth despite its simple appearance. The use of playing cards to represent conversations is brilliant, and it stands out for how different it feels. Next is Unpacking. When I first started unpacking, I was hoping for a fun puzzle game about where to put things. Instead, I got a story with a likable main character. The art is lovely, and the world is rich in details. Simple sounds, such as a refrigerator running, help you feel like you're in the real world. With the exception of a few minor issues, unpacking has everything you could want in a puzzle game and more. Animal Crossing New Horizons was released around the same time that people around the world were being placed under lockdown. Many people appreciated how it aided others. I'm unpacking right now because I have so many long games and deadlines. It's been a fantastic game to play in between longer, more stressful games. Some may find the gameplay too simple, but Unpacking has made something as simple as placing furniture and items in the correct location a lot of fun. Unpacking on the Nintendo Switch is also beneficial because it makes extensive use of the system's features. Next up, Winds of Change. Despite its small audience, Winds of Change is a thrilling fantasy visual novel about oppressed and downtrodden people finding hope and doing everything they can to change their world for the better. This is a story that anyone can appreciate. In Winds of Change, a visual novel adventure, you play as a hero tasked with saving your homeland. Throughout the game, you must make difficult decisions, explore your surroundings, discover secrets, and get to know the people around you. This game is enjoyable to play because it has an interesting story and a variety of activities. Activities. Next is the Jackbox Party Pack 9. The Jackbox Party Pack 9 has more hits than misses, and some of the hits came from unexpected places. Even the games I thought would be good turned out to be far superior to my expectations. This is in addition to some significant improvements in quality of life such as the ability to log into a room using a QR code. Jackbox Games continues to impress. There's no reason to stop including the Jackbox Party Pack in your regular game nights as long as the team keeps things simple. It still works perfectly. Jackbox Party Pack Volume 9 reboots the series by adding a slew of new games and improving the core software settings. Next is Traffics. Traffics may appear to be clean and simple, but it is not. This theme contrasts with the fast-paced, reflex-based gameplay, 
which will have you hitting the restart button repeatedly in order to get a perfect score. Nonetheless, it transforms a normally stressful crowded commute into a fun strategy game that anyone can enjoy. Traffics's concept is simple, but it works, it's a puzzle game in which you control streetlights. The game is simple at first, but it quickly becomes more difficult, which can be too much for some players. However, the overall experience is a success, thanks in part to the simple controls. Next up, Cyber Shadow. But for those who prefer to do things the old-fashioned way, this is the real deal. There are many old games, including some that have received a lot of praise, that I believe fell short due to bad ideas, boring level design, or smug pandering. It's not a sly wink or a cheap attempt to evoke nostalgia. It's an adequate substitute. In a sea of 8-bit throwbacks and NES tributes, Cyber Shadow stands out. Mechanical Head Studios and Yacht Club Games created a game with period graphics and gameplay, but it also has some modern features that improve it. As a result, the experience is difficult where it needs to be difficult, but never more so than necessary. Cyber Shadow is a must-play game for anyone who enjoys action platformers, retro games, or simply getting lost in some stunning 8-bit graphics. Next is The Longing. Play as a lonely shade, the last servant of a king who once ruled an underground kingdom. The king's powers have faded and he falls asleep for 400 days to regain his might. It is your duty to stay in the earthen palace until he awakens. As soon as you start, the game inevitably counts down the 400 days even when you stop playing and exit the game. It is now up to you to decide what to do with your solitary existence beneath the soil. Don't stress yourself, you have plenty of time. Start the game and simply come back after 400 days to see how it ends. You actually don't have to play the game at all, but the shade will be even more lonely without you. Next up, Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Shovel Knight's Treasure Trove reintroduces the knight with a shovel to demonstrate that it is still one of the best independent games released in recent years. This edition is a must-have for the Nintendo Switch because it includes the original game, two expansions, and all content in the form of new game modes or options. Shovel Knight Treasure Trove is so good that anyone who recently purchased a Nintendo Switch should definitely get it. All three campaigns feature the expected great platforming fun, entertaining stories, and impressive art and sound, and they're all contained within the same game. It's also more accessible than ever before on a platform that feels tailor-made for it. Next is Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. Pocket Dungeon immediately captured my attention and hasn't let go since. Everything in this puzzle game works, including the appearance, controls, modes, bosses, and the number of times you can play it. If a puzzle game is this well-crafted, it will outlast games like Tetris. Yacht Club gave the world Shovel Knight years ago, a retro game with pixel-perfect platforming that reminds you of the best NES games. Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon applies the same level of polish to a completely new genre and set of rules. It then incorporates roguelite elements to give it a completely new spin. It's interesting enough that you feel like you know what's going on right away, but it's also complicated enough that you want to play it over and over. Next is Mark of the Ninja Remastered. Mark of the Ninja Remastered is fantastic, with the exception of a few minor control issues caused by the fact that the same button is used for multiple functions. It's a well-planned stealth game with numerous ways to play and a lot of depth. I was worried that this 2012 game would show its age when I started playing it today, but the amazing thing is that it still feels brand new. This ninja has been lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike on Switch, and the results are spectacular. Still one of the best stealth games in recent years, as well well as a solid 2D platformer, with a near-perfect balance of depth, accessibility, and bloodshed. Next up, Cuphead. Cuphead for the Nintendo Switch takes everything that was great about the original game and puts it in a format that can be played both at home and on the go. This run-and-gun game that feels like a beautiful, interactive cartoon fits in perfectly with the rest of the Nintendo Switch games and is highly recommended to all players. Cuphead works well on the Nintendo Switch. The boss fights are difficult, amazing, and most importantly, entertaining. I'm excited to see what else Studio MDHR has in store for us next. The person who created this port knocked it out of the park. If you didn't play Cuphead on Xbox One or PC, don't miss out on this definitive portable version. Next is Bug Fables, the everlasting sapling. So maybe Nintendo will never make another really good Paper Mario game. Bug Fables from Moonsprout Games could be exactly what many series fans are looking for. If you're still obsessed with Sticker Star or perplexed by Color Splash, do yourself a favor and get this masterpiece as soon as possible to find out what all the fuss is about. Even if Origami King is a flop, you can bet that at least one great game with Paper Mario mechanics will be released in 2020, even if it doesn't bear the Paper Mario name. Next is Furia. Furia has a lot to offer, but it doesn't feel overly crowded. It's complicated, 
but it's never perplexing or frightening. Above all, it's a fun and exciting way to play both card games and board games. Furia is a fantastic card battle strategy game that is always enjoyable to play. This game has a lot going on and appears to be entertaining for a long time. Furia tries to differentiate itself from other digital card games by combining card game and board game mechanics, offering a variety of game modes and content, and employing a user-friendly progression system that does not rely on microtransactions. Despite a few technical flaws, it is successful. Next up, Pillars of Eternity, Complete Edition. Even with these issues that are unique to the Switch, Pillars of Eternity is a joy to play. There are more than 40 hours of great role-playing games to play with the main campaign and two add-ons. It's one of the best Switch ports because it's one of this generation's best games. Pillars of Eternity does not break the RPG genre's rules, but it is a great homage to the classics, and the fact that the player's actions are so important to the story makes it a game that never gets old. The combat system adds to the game's depth and elevates Pillars of Eternity to a work that should not be overlooked. Next is Loop Hero. It's not the most amusing game you'll ever play, but as your hero interacts with people around the world, you'll notice that a lot of thought was put into making conversations as entertaining as possible. Loop Hero is a really fun game, so it stands to reason that everything about it is designed to make it as enjoyable as possible. I discovered that it doesn't matter whether you like these types of games or not, Loop Hero is entertaining and addictive. Loop Hero is a smash hit on the Switch. Being able to play a fun, addictive game at home or on the go is a lot of fun. This is especially true for those who miss the days of grinding away to sweet 8-bit sounds. Loop Hero is one of the best games released in 2020. 21, so adding it to your Switch library is a wise decision. Next is Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torment. Yacht Club Games did an excellent job with Shovel Knight, and they've done it again with Spectre of Torment. Because of this new expansion, Shovel of Hope is no longer the best Shovel Knight game. With enough time, Yacht Club Games could easily create a better expansion than Plague of Shadows. This is demonstrated by the Spectre of Torment. Spectre of Torment is even better than I could have imagined. It features a remixed soundtrack, new levels, and the coolest character in the Shovel Knight series. There is no reason why you shouldn't own this game given what else is available on the Switch right now. Next up, Fuga, Melodies of Steel. It's rare to see a game that deals with the realities of war in a meaningful way in a medium that is so happy to make war into a silly entertainment. Fuga, Melodies of Steel does exactly that, and it does it very well, despite the cute character designs, it tells a scary but ultimately hopeful story about the damage war causes and how far people will go to save those they care about. Fuga, Melodies of Steel is a tactical JRPG with a lot of emotional power, capable of telling the story of war in a charming and unique way. Next is Shovel Knight, King of Cards. Shovel Knight, King of Cards is an excellent addition to the many wonderful add-ons created for the original game since its release. Anyone who owns a Nintendo Switch should have this game. It features a unique set of levels, a new character with new mechanics, and the same art style and soundscape as the previous Shovel Knight games. Like its predecessors, Shovel Knight, King of Cards features some of the best platforming gameplay ever seen in a video game. Yacht Club Games demonstrates that their most recent Shovel Knight expansion, King of Cards, is not a sham. Next is Shantae, Half Genie Hero. Even though the main game is short, you can win a prize if you beat it in under 4 hours, it has a speedrun mode and an even harder difficulty, both of which have interesting concept art. I took my time and got everything I could without having to replay stages for money. In the future, I'd like to experiment with the speedrun option. The transformations are a lot of fun to use, and I kept thinking, wait a minute, when I unlocked things like Crab Claws and Bat Form. Shantae looks fantastic as well and the music perfectly captures the mood of each stage. Next is Astolin, Tears of the Earth. The game's story and premise are intriguing, but they don't try to overshadow the action and exploration. A lackluster set of achievements and unlockables, as well as percentages of map and item finds, raise the longevity score even higher, and I found it difficult to put this one down. If you enjoyed playing Bloodstained, Axiom Verge, and other indie games quickly, you should check out Astolin, a fantastic adventure game. Astolin, Tears of the Earth is one of many retro 2D action-slash-platformer games for the Nintendo Switch, but it should be prioritized. Fans of the genre will find a lot to like here, as long as they don't mind going back in time. Next up, The Kids We Were. When I first started playing The Kids We Were, I had no idea what to expect, but it turned out to be a very interesting game that I couldn't put down until I finished. There is a variety of tones that should not work well together but do. It's enjoyable to run around Kagami streets and get to know its people while solving big and small mysteries to contribute to a much larger goal. The voxel-style graphics may or may not appeal to your tastes, 
but the story is well written, and the sense of nostalgia is palpable. If you enjoy story-driven adventures, you should try this one. Next up, Chicken Police, Paint It Red. Chicken Police isn't a game with multiple endings, but it is a fascinating detective noir visual novel with a lot of wit, beautiful music, and intriguing characters. Without giving too much away, I finished the game in about 10 or 11 hours because I took my time with everything and didn't rush through any of the dialogue. Returning to a character after a conversation you thought was over may reveal that they have said or done more. I'd advise you to take your time and enjoy the ride because it won't disappoint. Chicken Police is the guilty animal film noir treasure I didn't realize I needed until I flew into the wilderness and witnessed it for myself. Next is Lovers in a Dangerous Spacetime. Lovers in a Dangerous Spacetime is one of the most visually appealing and colorful multiplayer co-op games available. It's a fantastic shooter that showcases the best aspects of cooperative gameplay. The action picks up speed, the difficulty rises, and even if you fail, you can still have a good time. Lovers is a good addition to your Switch library if you have a few friends to play with, but even if you're alone, you can have a good time with a computer-controlled dog or cat. This is a cute and enjoyable adventure that fans of good co-op games should not overlook. Next is Return of the Obra Dinn. Even though I had to take breaks due to the game's appearance, I kept returning to it, eager to find the next breadcrumb and solve the next mystery, which would always lead to a new one. Return of the Obra Dinn is probably for you if you like games that make you think about everything you're given. This is the greatest detective game ever created. Its unpredictable story is told through a bizarre mix of graphics and puzzles. Return of the Obra Dinn is one of the most popular detective games ever made, despite being difficult to control on consoles. Next is The Last Friend. To be honest, The Last Friend is more like every last friend. So many dogs need to be saved, and each one is as adorable as the last. Every new friend is a new team member who can be used to take out multiple tough enemies at once. It's just so much fun to see how happy the dogs are when they're rescued and how many people you can get out on the street to help you fight. It's just a fun game, especially for dog lovers looking for a new reason to battle through difficult waves of enemies in order to save the world. Next up, Vitamin Connection. Vitamin Connection is without a doubt one of the best games available on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Even though you have to go back a little, the game moves quickly and is enjoyable the entire time. Each level contains a variety of enjoyable challenges and obstacles that will put your skills to the test. In addition, the mini-games break up the main game in a fun way that doesn't interfere with it. But, most importantly, I like how it's presented. The game's bright characters and funky Japanese music made me smile all the time. Vitamin Connection is compatible with this system, whether you're playing alone or with a friend. Next is The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 4. Cold Steel 4 retains all of the major plot points from its predecessor, which is both a good and a bad thing. It also brings the Erebonia story for the Trails series to a close. This is one of the best modern RPGs, and the fact that it can be played on the Switch only adds to its appeal. The Trails of Cold Steel saga has evolved into an important part of the JRPG genre. As is customary, the final chapter of the series concludes in a smart, rich, and humorous manner. Despite the fact that the gameplay is similar to previous games in the series, The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 4 is a fitting end to the series and its characters. And last, but not the least, Trine 2, Complete Story. Trine 2, Complete Story is coming to Nintendo Switch, but there isn't much new content. That doesn't matter because this is such a fantastic puzzle game. Trine 2 could only get better if it was made into a handheld system. Its art style remains beautiful as it ages, and the controls and gameplay are flawless. Now that this goal has been met, all that remains is for everyone to get their hands on it. Trine 2 is one of the best video games ever made, and this complete story edition is the best way to play it so far, especially considering the Switch's portability. This game is a must-have if you enjoy 2D puzzle platformers. That's all guys. I hope this video was helpful in deciding which game to play, and thank you for checking out the list. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you at the next one.